Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 2 talking about testing throughout the SDLC and continuing ahead with 2.2, the test levels and the test types. Also, moving into the next segment, which is 2.2.1 test levels, we are still continuing with that. And today we'll be talking about system integration testing. So far, we have discussed about some of the functional levels like component testing, component integration, system testing, and today we'll be talking about the next level, which is system integration testing. Now, system integration testing, as the word suggests, the terminology talks about, it is more about integration between two or more systems. However, it's not mandatory that every single application has to go through this particular level because not all simple applications have combination of multiple systems put together to be called as end product. But as far as we are talking about the trending techni technical factors today, we see most of the applications are combination of two or more applications as end product. And certainly there are certain embedding which happens as a part of it, which makes it mandatory enough for the team to conduct system integration level. Now here we are talking about interfaces, interactions and communications between two or more system. Now what could be that which defines the basic fundamentals of system integration testing and then we'll take up a quick sample example to understand more about it. So system integration testing focuses on testing the interfaces of the system under test and any other system and external services which are communicating with it. So it's just not limited that it should be only external systems but sometime within internal itself, you may have parts of different systems which are connected together to call it as a single product. And most of the time you would see the, your system being interacting with another set of systems which might be from a different vendor and put together to be called as an end product. In simple words, if I talk about Zomato having an embedding of the Google Maps in order to track the order or deliver the order, you do see the tracking option where you can see the map and directions of the delivery boy coming to your place or the del delivery boy looking at the map to reach your location is again a system integration because Google Maps is not a product of Zomato, Swiggy or Food Panda or any other such applications. That's what we call it as system integration testing. Also to add here that system integration testing requires suitable test environments, preferably similar to the operational environment because uh, when it comes to system integration, you're talking about final functional product testing. And the more we are close to the real environment, the much it is better. But why don't we always hard coded say that we need real environment to conduct this level? Because of course we cannot do this in production. That is after release. We have to conduct these levels before release or prior to releases. And second important thing, sometimes it's not cost effective or convenient enough to afford the real environment for initial levels of testing. So we just try to be as close as possible to the real environment as much as possible. Now let's talk about some quick examples that what could be the different ways by which system integration testing can happen in the world today. So we have three different combinations which can be achieved as a part of today's technical factors and technical traits. Number one, system integration is possible in the following combination that is software, 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 hardware, hardware, hardware. So if I take a quick example of Amazon, you do understand that there are applications like Amazon which are shopping e-commerce website and they help you shop products. But did you know that Amazon doesn't have a payment option? Yes, if you're talking in India, you may talk about Amazon Pay, which is an inbuilt wallet where you can make payment from there. But other than that, they just have cash on delivery. That means they do not have any payment options. Now hold on, you might be thinking that, hey, isn't it talking wrong? We do have Visa and you know American Express, credit card, debit card, net banking, and okay, hold on. You understood yourself when you're saying that. They do not belong to Amazon, right? The net banking are the ownership of the banks. The credit card and debit cards are the ownership of the card provider. Things like Visa, Master, Diners, Amex, which is American Express, and so on. That means none of these belong to Amazon. 
So Amazon goes and requests them that, hey Visa, can you give me your payment gateway so that my consumers can go ahead and make the payment on this. Same way, Amazon requests different banks like ICICI Bank or Indian Overseas Bank or any other bank, whatever you might be having respectively in your countries, they reach out to them that, do you want me to give your payment gateway so that I can allow my consumers to have the convenience of making payment from net banking and that's how the banks also make money from these transactions so they will happily give it it's not that they have to beg them to give them the payment gateway they of course sell it as one of the services or one of the courts that is commercial of the self product right commercial of the self product simply means that they are not generally available as in a standalone application but they can be seen in many other applications so net banking is a courts which means it's not a standalone application but can be used with many other applications. Same way, if I talk about the credit and debit cards, the bank are not the owners of that. The Visa, Master, MX, Mestro, these are the people who are owning that card. So they have to reach out to Visa, they have to reach out to American Express, they have to reach out to Master to ask them for the payment gateways. And in order to test all these things, we conduct system integration testing. Now in this scenario, we pretty much understood that it is a combination of two softwares, that is software and software put together in order to get the end product so that the shopping experience can be done end to end, not just adding to the cart. The second example here is software hardware and certainly software hardware could be seen as your embedded products today, like any kind of appliances, what you might be using on your day-to-day -day life, be it your cell phone, smartwatches, airports, elevators, or any other equipment and appliances like laptop, refrigerator and all. They're all controlled by a software, but they are actually hardware, right? So as we talk about embedded sciences, we are talking about connecting software to that of hardware to make it as end product. So all those iOS and, uh, sorry, not iOS, the IoT, the Internet of Things, all the devices and equipments or any other appliances, what you might be using today is a very good example of the software hardware combination. And yes, we do conduct system integration testing on these products. And the last example is hardware hardware combination, which simply means that if you talk about heavy machineries like heavy earth movers, JCB, cranes, and even if you talk about amusement parks, in amusement parks, you do have roller coasters and jumbo rides and whatnot. And they are all just hardware hardware combinations. That means it's just combination of hydraulics and pneumatics where it works on different components being connected together. But there is no software concept, but of course, different parts are from different companies and they make it a very interesting, thrilling, joyful rides for you. And that's what is like roller coaster, which is a good combination of hardware, hardware together, right? So put together, this is what in detail I could explain you that what system integration is all about. And I hope you got a good understanding of that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.